for quite a while now, I've been doing coverage of various Wayland-related issues, whether it's the fairly recent merger of global hotkey support, WL Roots-based compositors like Sway, Hyperland, and I do plan to cover others as well, like Wayfire, River, LabWC, it's just a matter of getting around to doing them, or just software addressing legitimate concerns built into Wayland. And going back even further, covering things like OBS actually becoming usable on Wayland. And when I say Wayland, I'm referring to the whole Wayland sphere, not just specifically the Wayland core protocol. I'm talking about WL Roots, GNOME, KDE, and then the software involved in that space as well. And I think doing this Wayland coverage and Wayland coverage in this way is really, really important. Because sure, I could just be a generic Wayland attractor. I could say, Wayland will never be ready. Wayland is bad. There's no point to Wayland. It is always going to be worse than Exorg. And sure, you might have some merit to saying that. And there's nothing inherently wrong with trying to push the industry, trying to push the open source space in the direction that you want. Right now, none of the development effort cares about Exorg. All of it has moved over to Wayland. If you want that to move back to Exorg, there's nothing wrong with that. But complaining just for the sake of complaining doesn't really help anyone. All it is is just extra background noise. Now, I won't shy away from being negative even in my Wayland videos. I've done plenty of those in the past as well. But when I am being negative, it is for the purpose of being critical. I see something that is not going the way that it probably should be going and explain with, you know, reason and information about what's going on, why it should be going this other direction instead. And hey, it's not just the fact that covering Wayland is great for the channel, because if that's what I really cared about and that's all I cared about, I wouldn't be doing Linux videos. I'd be doing like calling dead person at 4am, drinking potion, turning into a mugger style of videos, which are very normie friendly and get a lot of views. The reason I like covering all of these Wayland related topics is I feel and many other people out there feel like this is the direction the Linux desktop is going to be going. There is no reason to bother turning this back within 10 or 15 years, Wayland is going to be what we use on Linux. And I could spend my time doing development work and documentation and design work and things that anybody out there could spend their time doing as well. But I don't think that's the most valuable use of my time. It's not the only thing that is really important in improving the FOSS space. Another thing that is really important that a lot of people just don't really think about that often is marketing, promotion, and making sure that up-to-date information is actually readily available. Take, for example, something not related to Wayland, like Rust, for example. There is a lot of really bad information floating around about Rust, like the fact that bringing Rust into the Linux kernel is going to lock down the number of architectures that can be supported. And this was true at one point. And then at another point, which is last year, they merged in the Rust GCC backend. So now that's just not an issue and this is only getting better and better and better. If it's supported by GCC, it's going to be supported by Rust as well. Or in the Wayland space, my favorite pet problem, OBS and global hotkeys. Now the global hotkey support has been merged into the portal, but it's still a matter of time for things to properly support it and for that to propagate out into the environment for people to actually be using. And when that is easily accessible and easily usable by the regular user, I'm gonna make sure that everybody knows about it because I'm going to wanna be using it as well. I genuinely do enjoy digging deeply into these topics that nobody else is going to want to do. You have no idea how much time I spend digging into pull requests, issues, mailing lists. What you see in the videos is a very compressed form of what I read. For some of those videos, I spend multiple hours just reading mailing lists and nothing else, like the Linux kernel and things like that, extracting out that useful information into a condensed form that someone is going to want to consume. Because sure, you can go and read those mailing lists yourself, but most people aren't gonna do that. You wanna spend like 10 minutes at most getting the important information, and then if you wanna check more out, hey, you're gonna do that, but that's not what most are going to do. 
if I didn't enjoy digging through that information, there is no way I would actually bother doing so. But maybe even more important than making sure up-to-date information is out there is making sure issues are actually being addressed. Because a lot of time an issue, a poor request, a bug report, whatever you want to call it, is going to be made and maybe you'll get attention for like, you know, a month, a year, maybe even two years, but sometimes these issues just don't get addressed. And I feel like with this platform, I can bring more attention to that issue and maybe someone who has the experience to work on it because sure, I could go and fix it myself, but I don't know every language out there. I don't know every project and there might be someone involved in that project or who wants to get involved who can go and address the problem instead. But sometimes it's not just the fact that nothing is being done. Sometimes a little bit of work is being done, but it's fairly low on the priority list and just it might get done in the future, but it's not going to get done anytime soon. And by bringing more attention to that issue and letting people know that it actually exists, that in some cases might convince the people working on the project that this is more important to work on than some other thing they were doing instead. I've said this before and I'll say it again. A lot of FOSS projects like to worry about the shiny things, the features that look really cool to implement. Whereas a lot of the like back end stuff, the low end things that are really important, those fundamentals to make the project rock solid, those aren't as, you know, as sexy to work on. They're just these things that need to be done, like documentation, for example, but no one really wants to do them. And in cases where things are being worked on and a lot of work is going into making that thing actually good, like global shortcuts, for example, it gives people hope that Wayland is going to get better. Wayland is an incredible experience if you go specifically in the line where you avoid all of the giant usability holes. But a lot of people need global shortcuts, they need remote desktop access and things like this, areas where either it barely works or it doesn't work whatsoever and as these things are being worked on it gives people an idea that Wayland isn't just about breaking the Linux desktop there is this idea I've seen floating around that developers involved in Wayland simply don't care about user experience and maybe you can make that argument about specifically just the Wayland core protocol, because the core protocol is effectively useless without all of the extensions being built on top of it. But that's the important thing. A lot of extensions are being built, a lot of software is being built to make Wayland actually a good experience. And maybe those individual solutions are still a year or multiple years out, but I want people to know that they're actually on their way. And while those initial solutions, those initial implementations may not be in the absolute perfect state, I want to be honest about the state they're currently in. So if it's in a good state, I'll absolutely praise the state it's currently in. But usually there's at least some bad aspects, whether it's broken in this context or great in that context, but broken in this other context. I want to make sure that everybody knows the state of these solutions that are going on because I still see so many people spread around this really outdated information about Wayland and I would say it's about as bad as the Windows users who spread this really outdated information about Linux because the information just isn't readily available and I think what I can do is make that information more readily available and hopefully deal with some of that problem. You're never going to deal with all of it. Some people just want to be wrong about things until the end of time. But most people accept like, hey, this thing is good now. I guess we can stop talking about it. So I hope that by covering Wayland, it encourages more people to get involved in Wayland and the surrounding projects, not just in development and documentation, but just using it and trying it out as well, doing things like bug reporting, and even if you want to, doing some level of monetary support. Because FOSS only thrives when everybody is working together on a common goal. It doesn't mean everybody has to be doing the same work, but working towards the same direction. I am really glad to see the interest that Wayland is receiving, and I'm very excited to see where it goes into the future. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Maybe you're already using Wayland, maybe you don't care about Wayland and you just 
don't really want to use it, I would love to know. So if you like this video, remember to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, and Rivera pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays. That's going to be it for me. And I'm out.